Welcome to the Motorsport Arena Oschersleben. It's the return of the NASCAR GP of Germany in the NASCAR Wheelan Euro Series, bringing the excitement of Euro NASCAR back to the fans in Germany with an all-important weekend, the final two rounds of regular season before the double-point season finale at Zolder in October. 3.6 miles, 2.3 miles of circuit awaits the drivers, a challenging 14-corner layout. Hello, race fans. I'm here with Ryan Vargas, a racing driver from the United States of America. You're driving in the NASCAR Xfinity and Truck Series, but now it's your first time in your NASCAR in Germany. How do you like it so far? It's been a blast so far. I mean, these cars, they're a lot more rigid. You know, they're more designed for road course racing, so um, you could really toss the cars around a lot harder on a road course here, which is a lot of fun, but it is something that I have to get used to because I'm, al I'm allowed to be more aggressive with the throttle and the wheel inputs and the braking, so, you know, they drive very well for being a stock car on a road course. So now it's up to me to kind of figure out the little bits and pieces here. And we've picked up a couple seconds from the beginning of the day. So um, just figuring it out. And right now we're in the middle of the pack. Hopefully by the end of the day, we'll be more towards the front. First time in Germany as well. Anything special you experienced here that's completely different than in the US? I just can't read the road signs. Um, I can't read anything here. Um, I'm. Once I finally got to the racetrack, I started seeing NASCAR signs. Like, okay, now I'm now I'm back at home. Um, but it's just it, that's the biggest shell shock for me is I've never been outside of the United States. So, you know, going to another country where you don't really speak the language, it's definitely a, a, a challenge. All right, thank you so much and good luck. Sounds good. Well, not such a challenge with the road signs for our pole sitter, Tobias Dauenhauer with the promotion team, a German driver and a German team on pole position for this Euro NASCAR Pro race. Lots of attention on the drivers, lots of fans down on the grid before we get to the meat of the action. Dauenhauer and Gorelli on the first row, one of the key championship contenders there, then Vittorio Gorelli, Gianmarco Urkeli, the championship leader just behind. Racing begins then, and it's a good start by the looks of it from Gorelli. Downhower being swallowed up a bit. Urkeli alongside him. Dufro from a, the second row of the grid. He gets to second place. Paul Dufro displacing Tobias Downhower. Downhower not capitalizing on that pole position in the manner that he would have wanted, in the manner that his team would have wanted on home turf. Lucas Lasser is up to fourth position ahead of Gianmarco Urkeli as well. So Lucas Lasser right up there in the championship hunt with Gianmarco Urkeli and Vittorio Gorelli. And he is up to fourth place in the early stages, but it's our race leader, the number 72 machine of Vittorio Gorelli that leads them through the first ever lap of Euronascar racing at the Motorsport Arena Rochersleben. Gianmarco Urkeli with some work to do from fifth place. Field streams towards turns 11 and 12 then. And it's Gorelli from Dufro from Downhower, your top three. And you can see that Gianmarco Urkeli is close up there behind Lucas Lasset. Across the line they go to begin the second lap of 20. You can see Hercule really keen on getting past Lucas Lasset. Don't worry about Anthony Kumpen behind him as well in the 24, another of the championship contenders. Both Lasser and Kumpen have really uh, managed to stay in the championship hunt just by being unspectacular but solid this season. After this weekend, the two worst scores from the first 10 rounds of the season are dropped ahead of the double point season finale at Zolder. So everyone keen to get some good points on the board. Anthony Kumpen. We ride on board with him in sixth place and Urkeli getting a bit taily there ahead of the Belgian. Kumpen who has raced here at Oschersleben a lot and Urkeli puts a foot wrong there. That could be the opportunity that Anthony Kumpen needs to take fifth place. It is. Anthony Kumpen gets through into P5 in the 24 car. Mark Goosen just behind them as well. Good to see Goosen's back. 
Vladimir Osiotsis, he started from the pit lane in this race. He's had engine issues in qualifying, and judging by the lack of speed and the abundance of smoke, that car is still not running properly. The Alex Caffey Academy team with some work to do to get that car out for the Euronascar 2 race later on this Saturday afternoon. The top four, really the top three in this lead battle, Lucas Lasserre not quite with them at the moment. And Vittorio Gorelli is our race leader right now, and while he is controlling it admirably, he has not got any buffer, any cushion to work with. Paul Giffro is making things very difficult for the Italian racer, the former Euronascar 2 champion. Vittorio Gorelli, former champion in single seaters as well. Tobias Downhauer looking to make a statement here. Himself and promotion will be so keen to put on a good performance in front, in front of their fans, their friends, potential partners as well, of course, being a German team. Your home country is usually the first place you look for sponsorship, for partnership as a racing team and as a young racing driver. And Tobias Downhauer, one of the best young racing drivers out there, and goodness me, he was right on the edge of adhesion there. So many great young stars in this championship. Another one we're riding on board with, Paul Giffro. Trying to find his way around Vittorio Gorelli. Gorelli under significant pressure here. Just looks as though Gorelli is having to drive on eggshells to a certain degree. Out of the final corner they go. Can Paul Giffro find his way past? Lucas Lasserre certainly having a look at Tobias Downhauer. Top four. All side by side. Goodness me, Paul Giffro <laughs> had a look to the inside there. He wasn't really afforded the space, and that could open the door now to Tobias Downhauer trying to go around the outside at turn three. Can't quite get that done. So it's Gorelli from Giffro, from Downhauer, from Lasserre. Of course, Giffro taking on this seat in the number three car from Frederick Gavion after Brands Hatch has already taken his first win in Euronascar Pro. Given he missed the first two rounds, he's unlikely to be a championship contender this year, even with the double points on offer. It would take a lot of misfortune for a lot of other drivers for Dupro to be anywhere near the top five even. Uh, but he really is showing himself well for seasons to come, isn't he? As for Gianmarco Urkeli, he's on the back of that train and quite puzzling that he is there in sixth place. We'd expect more from him. Oh, Liam Hazeman's there, losing the rear at turn 12. That allows Giorgio Maggi through into eighth place. Maggi, oh dear, I think the rear axle just locked on Giorgio Maggi. Maggi went deep into the corner and then the rear just locked. I think things aren't quite right with that car. Meanwhile, Anthony Kumpen there behind Blake Kermolen and Hazemans. Kumpen has had an issue off camera as well, so he's now on the fringes of the top 10. He was, of course, running in fifth place early in the race. Blake Kermolen, Hazemans and Kumpen fighting for seventh place here. Three very historic names in the Benelux region when it comes to motorsport and GT racing in particular. Sebastian Blake and Molen has shared a car with Anthony Kumpen before. Anthony Kumpen has shared a car with uh, Liam's older brother, Mike Hazemans, before. And look at Liam Hazemans all over the back of Sebastian Blake and Molen at the moment. The youngster, Hollywood Liam Hazemans, last year's Euronascar 2 champion. Oh, and Lucas Lasserre pulling off the circuit. Lucas Lasserre with a problem. I don't know exactly what's happened to Lucas, but his car crawling to a halt off camera. So this is now a battle for sixth place. And Liam Hazemans is having a look at that position. He gets through, but that was never going to work. Far too much speed into turn 11. You have to admire the ambition out of Liam Hazemans, but that one was never going to work. He doesn't lose a place to Anthony Kumpen, mercifully. But 
Sebastian Blake Molen. I think recognised there that Liam wasn't making that corner. And that battle for what is now sixth place continues on. Kumpen watching as Hazemans to the outside there. Cuts back in, of course, for a better run out of turn two. Oh, but Kumpen to the inside of Hazemans, and I think Hazemans may have missed a gear or something there because he suddenly slowed up massively on the run towards turn three as if the car simply stopped accelerating. He's back up to speed now, though. I think Liam Hazemans may have had a problem there. Look at that lead. The 72 for Vittorio Gorelli. This has been a race to savour at the sharp end. Heads through the final corner. The nice advantage to buy Stauhauer trying to get through to second place. Couldn't stay on the track. So Gorelli crossing the line to take the win, or does he? Because as you see on that classification, Paul Dufro is classified as the winner. However, that decision was made many hours later. And so Vittorio Gorelli showed up to the podium thinking that he was a race winner. And at this point, everyone else thought so too. Because uh, I think we had the Gorelli was talking the about in the, in the how good the car was. He was struggling early on, but he managed to take the win. However, after the race, technical investigations reveal that the car was running an incorrect air filter. No performance advantage, but only a minor penalty drops him down to fourth place. Unfortunately, wrong air filter, incorrect technical part on the car. It was a hard race um, for me. Uh, it was it was a bit pity at the start. Uh, I didn't get running. I don't know why. I have to look at the onboard after the race. But uh, yeah, good race for us. Uh, German team here at our home event. Uh, podium is uh, definitely good, and uh, I'm happy. Gorelli taking the top step, not knowing that ultimately he would be reduced to fourth position, and he'd have to hand back that glorious. Oschersleben NASCAR trophy. The junior trophy classification going to Paul Dufro in that race from Tobias Dauenhauer and Thomas Toffel taking the Challenger trophy honors. You're a NASCAR too. Also with a race on Saturday, also with a big championship battle. I'm here now with Ariana Kassel, the, the best driver in the Lady Trophy so far in this season, but we are back to Germany. How happy are you to be here at Oschersleben? Well, I'm really happy. The track is amazing, but very difficult, really technical and fast. So I'm not used it enough to the track. I hope to improve uh, a little bit more. We are working on the setup now, and let's see in the next uh, session if I will be a little bit better. And then, you know, the race and the qualifying is completely different. So let's see what's happened tomorrow. I just want to find the feeling with the racetrack because there are some points that are tricky and slippery. <laughs> this morning with the rain was really slippery. So I didn't have a good feeling, but I'm improving. <laughs> Every time I'm here in your pit box, I see Speed Towers is having a big party, having a lot of fun. How is it to be in the par part of this team? Okay, it's great. I love them so much. It's fun. That when you finish to work, it's fun. While you are working, it's really professional and attentive to all details. So, it's, you know, you switch on, off, work and uh, fun and that's really nice. All right, thank you so much and good luck later. Thank you. In your NASCAR 2, Paul Dufro, of course, primary title contender, as well as pole sitter for this race. A lot of eyes on the driver of the number three. Heading into this 16 lapper. Dufro and Nasca on the front row, Dubeck and Linster on row two. And down at the back of the grid, and in fact, not taking the start, I'm hearing Vladimir Osiortsis 
one of the big hitters in this championship battle, not able to start this race because of the engine issues we saw in your NASCAR Pro earlier on. So Paul Giffro runs towards the first corner as the race leader. Golden opportunity for both he and NASCAR to score points over Siortis in this race. Linster side by side there with Dubek for third position. Claudio Romeggio Capelli in fifth place. It's Paul Giffro that leads early on in this Euro NASCAR 2 race. Most of the cars shared across both categories, of course. A car that was driven by Gianmarco Ercoli now in the hands of Alberto Nascar in this one. Patrick Schauber down there in the uh, 27 car, the double V racing entry uh, in the second half of the top 10 at the moment. Not quite a home race for the Austrian, but uh, about as close as he gets, he'll be looking to get a good result. Dubek up in third place, the 2021 Euro NASCAR 2 champion. Jill Linster, of course, in the Euro NASCAR 2 seat. He shares that car with Liam Hazeman's last year's Euro NASCAR 2 champion. Dubek still doubling up across both categories. Running in third place at the moment, he'd love to get himself another podium. We're only about a three-hour drive away from the Autodrom Most here at Oschersleben, which, of course, is the home nation event for Martin Dubek. Claudio Romeggio Capelli there in fifth place. He's had his home event already, of course, that being Vallelunga. Oh, and a car off circuit in the back of shot. Didn't quite catch which car that was. I think it could have been Benedetti in the 88. Meanwhile, Capelli trying to investigate his chances of getting past Jill Linster. He looks the inside. Linster realizes the car is there. Leaves just enough room. Emphasis on the word just. And then side by side into turn three. Surely Capelli can't go around the outside there. No, not quite. A lot of dust kicked up further ahead. Not quite sure who that was. Capelli definitely making his intentions known. He wants overall podiums before the end of this year. And he seems to be gelling well with this Motorsport Arena Oschersleben layout. It seems to be suiting Capelli. Melvin de Groot in sixth position with Schaubert to Felt and the 88 behind of uh, Roberto Benedetti. And can Schaubert maybe get to the inside here? He's got a good run. He's got the inside line, but I don't think he's quite brave enough on the brakes. Discretion, sometimes the better part of Valor and Patrick Schauber realising that. He's got to be careful, though, because Thomas Duffel certainly isn't going to uh, say no if the opportunity is presented to him to get past Schauber. Duffel running well in the rookie trophy element of this race, of course, as well. Groot sliding wide, and Patrick Schaubert says, absolutely, thank you very much. Through he goes into sixth place. The 27 car gets by. Nose to tail out of turn three. Meanwhile, Paul Giffro and Alberto Nasca have broken away from the pack, and can Nasca close in? Fro setting a good pace, but Nasca has been a little bit quicker over the last couple of laps, so maybe the Italian can get to the back of Giuffro. Dubek, Linster, Capelli, third, fourth and fifth places. Claudio Romeggio Capelli smells a podium. But will the door open? Enough for him to try and squeeze through before the end of this race. As the afternoon becomes the early evening here at Solskjaer 
His time is running out. The laps are ticking away. Dubeck and Linster. Both running fairly well here. Neither of them making errors, which is what Capelli needs. Of course, Dubeck, if he makes an error, that's exactly what Linster needs as well. But they're all keeping themselves together. But Linster there. Too shallow into the second element of the chicane, and that is the mistake that Claudio Remeggio Capelli was waiting for. Capelli gets himself up into fourth position at the expense of Jill Linster. Linster just caught himself on the inside curb there at turn 10. Compromised his exit from the corner, and once again, turn 10 is the critical place on this track. You have to nail that corner before the long run down to turn 11. Capelli moves up to P4. Patrick Shaw, but right there behind Linster as well. Having worked his way up to sixth place, could he make further headway at the expense of the Hendrix Motorsport number 50 entry? He certainly wouldn't rule it out. Shorba looks to the inside there. That would have been daring from that far back. I think just making his intentions clear to Jill Linster, who... I don't know whether he's maybe slightly overheated the tyres or is carrying a little damage, but it looks like Linster is struggling at this stage. He's fallen off the back of Capelli and Dubeck, and he's now under significant pressure from Patrick Schorba, who goes to the inside here. This could be a move. Patrick Schorba through into fifth position. The double V racing team will be happy to see that car into the top five. Hendrix Motorsport will be scratching their heads as to why their 50 car is out of the top five. Into the pits comes Patrick Schorber. We think he may have a slow puncture, which is why he is into the pit lane. Now, here is Alberto Nasca, and you'll note that Nasca has really fallen off the tail of Paul Giuffro. We believe he may have been held up by a back marker here at the chicane a few laps ago. But that's allowing Paul Giuffro to drive home free here to the end of this race. Giuffro has come alive in the RDV competition seat. And the young Frenchman who last time out became the youngest ever Euro NASCAR Pro winner in history at the Autodrome Most takes another bow in Euro NASCAR 2. It's a win for Giuffro. It's second place for Alberto Nasca. Paul Giuffro, your race winner. He taps the roof of the number three. Success again for Giuffro. The pace was just really good. Um, we had the issue with the um, Lapet guy uh, with Nazca that made a bigger, bigger gap. And I think since that moment, we decided both to lift off to preserve the, the tire for tomorrow because uh, every time I was uh, lifting off a bit more to get like 90% of driving and Alberto was doing even more. So I think that we have uh, keep uh, extremely good, good tire, both of us uh, for tomorrow. So this will be uh, a close race tomorrow. Paul is very fast. The, the car work, but Paul is a very amazing driver. You can be sure it is very, very fast. I'm, I'm sure to be a lot of sync with Paul uh, in uh, NASCAR 2 this year and uh, in pro, I'm sure. We have to talk about the championship right now. We cannot leave this topic away anymore. How often do you think about this could be the year? We need to work a lot because, you know, the, the points come dub, double for in, uh, in Belgium. So the big job is this weekend, but the big, big job is in, uh, in Belgium. All right. Merci beaucoup. Congratulations. Merci. Salut, salut. Merci. Salut, coucou la France. There you go. Jubilation for RDV competition and Paul Dufro once again. Coming out of round nine of the season, the rookie trophy classification going to Thomas Torfell. The legend trophy to Claudio Remeggio Capelli. But with Vladimir Osiortzis not taking the start in this race, it's a big feeling among the top contenders in Euro NASCAR to NASCAR and Giuffre smell blood 
in that battle. And in your NASCAR Pro, it's hotting up as well, heading into round 10 and day two of the NASCAR GP Germany.